I'll be honest, I'm not a winter guy. The rain, the cold, and the bus taking 15 minutes longer before it decides to show up. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. A new season of anime has come, and it is set out to impress. Look at that smile. But let's address the elephant in the room here. How do you know what to watch? Well, I'm here to tell you. His four shows that if you're not watching, you're missing out. Or at the very least, you're just not a fun person. <laughs> Let's start with the best show this season, don't agree, fight me mate. With Death Parade, we're presented with a purgatory setting, whereby people are judged on where exactly they're heading next. Be that heaven or hell, except it's not, but I'll let you watch the show to find that out. Here's where it gets juicy though, Death Parade seems to be so far ticking all of my boxes from what I've seen. Not only is it building the structural systems of this purgatory, and of course the world itself, it's not neglecting the core reason why I liked the original short, the people that are brought in for judgement. What I love most about Death Parade above all else is the interactions it presents with the people that are brought into the situation of the judgement, giving us personality to these characters that normally shouldn't have any. On top of that, the show implements this in such a fun way so that it's ultimately just as much fun as it is psychologically gripping. That mix is incredibly refreshing, most probably because it's really hard to pull off. Throw in the light philosophical banter, characters that I personally love and it looks like there'll be more, plus that madhouse visual charm, and you've got yourself my personal favourite of the season. Overall, I hope it can keep all of this up, because in doing so, it will ultimately be fun to watch till the very end. A must watch. Unique is probably the best word to describe Rolling Girls. Unique and full of energy, which turns out to be quite a great blend. First of all, we have the wacky setting, a divided and conflicted Japan, which so far has showcased some really interesting places. Case in point, Tokyo. The dynamics of the entire world we're presented with are absorbing and ultimately give the show a really great backbone. The bulk of the story follows four girls traveling around the country in what's called a mob, and these characters are just as good as the set. Not only are they incredibly fun to watch interact with their surroundings, themselves as a group are an interesting mix. Again, don't get me wrong, there's still a hell of a lot of development needed, but it's already hinting at it. Here's the thing, through every single episode, I never found myself bored, it's so amazingly vibrant and had a great abstract art style, all of which really brings the entire experience to life, my eyes were glued to the screen. It also boasts a really great soundtrack to back it, which is always a bonus. Ultimately, its very bombastic nature is where its uniqueness and thus charm lies. It provides punchy fight scenes, yet doesn't choose to centrally focus around that. In my mind, it hits a sweet spot between lovable characters, an interesting setting, and a fun concept. Wake up! Well, stepping around the British slang, you're probably wondering what's so great about Kantai Collection, because it's quite mixed in terms of people's opinions. Well, it really just comes down to Yuri girls who transform into battleships. Let me get this clear, this anime isn't for everyone, and I don't know where some people got that idea from, you're all- Wake up. Okay, we won't go there. So whilst I do think Can Call is not anything amazing, it's bloody entertaining. We're presented with something very abstract, an anime based off a web browser game, which means wacky game mechanics and other neat little things are everywhere. Sure, that kind of drags it down as a piece of media, for obvious reasons, and the characters vastly differ in terms of their, like, ability. Please, shut up. But then you also get Naka-chan and other fun characters, but not only that, generally a nice setting. So here's the balance. Not only are you getting the whole slice of life character interactions, you're also getting some quite dynamic fight scenes. Which, all in all, made this a fun show to watch so far, and believe it or not, episode 3 got kind of dark. Yeah, it won't be for long, but trust me, that's a good thing. This show accepts what it is, yet at the same time, it can be pretty fun and exciting. Can't say I'm too keen on the CG, but whoever is, hey. Idol shows basically belong in the sports genre. They have everything you'd expect from a sports anime, except they're singing and dancing girls, which is always great. This idea is really concrete in Cinderella Girls, which focuses heavily on the industry and performances as opposed to the individual characters themselves. 
which surprised me. Not only this, you get a hell of a lot more interesting setting with the studio, and you don't get horrible CG. Like I said though, it's still got all the character situations and development in place that gives it the sports show formula. Now of course, nothing will top the characters of Love Live comparing the two, and with 14 girls, I don't think it's even going to get close just because it won't have enough time. But with what we've got now, it looks like it will definitely at least deliver some strong characters, the main three already showing that this could potentially happen. Then of course you have producer San, who acts as an excellent contrast to these girls and really added to the fun atmosphere. As far as the actual music, which of course is quite important due to the whole show focusing around it, it's really hit and miss. We actually haven't heard all that much, so I can't make an overall judgement, but comparing it to Love Live again, the songs lack the same vibrancy. Besides all the negatives, if you're interested in idol shows and particularly looking at it from a slightly different angle than the norm, I wholeheartedly recommend it. <laughs> So that's all from me, I'd definitely watch Rolling Girls and Death Parade if you're going to watch anything on this list. Be sure to let me know what you've been watching and enjoying this season in the comments. Other than that, it's looking like a pretty great winter, so expect some full reviews, hopefully at least, coming soon. I've been Russ, and have a great night or day. Have a